Hello, in this video we're going to be taking a look at using vectors to help us describe 2D motion. And so for this video I'm going to assume that you're already familiar with the constant acceleration equations or the SUVAT equations, as well as using calculus to help us find the displacement velocity and acceleration. So if you're unsure on those two things, I'll link my videos on it in the description. There's only two for that stuff, as well as a link to my playlist on A-level mechanics. Now I'm going to timestamp the different parts of the video, so if you just want to see, for example, a SUVAT equation question, then you can just skip through to that uh, in this video. And we're going to start off with some notation because this comes up a lot in this topic, and that is that if we have a 2D vector, say xy, we could represent that in terms of the i and j unit vectors, and we could represent it like this, x multiplied by i plus y multiplied by j. Okay, and so for example, say we had some acceleration vector a that was equal to say 4, 2. This could be represented and sometimes written in a question as 4i plus 2j. Okay, and that's just something to be familiar with because it will come up in this video. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is this formula here, which says that for a particle with a constant velocity, okay, so a velocity that doesn't change, then its displacement vector s is equal to its velocity vector t multiplied by the time, okay? And I think this is pretty easy to see why this is true. And so, for example, say we had just an xy plane like this, okay, so we've got x and y. And say we have a particle that is starting at the origin, so at 0, 0, this point here. And say this particle has a velocity vector of 1, 1, okay, so it's moving one unit across and one uh, unit up every second if it's going in meters per second, okay, like that. And say we want to find out the displacement of this particle at a time equal to three seconds, okay. Well, let's think, after the first second, the particle is going to be there, okay, it's gone one to the right and one up. After the second second, it's going to be here, and after the third second, it's going to be here, right? So it's now got a new position, I guess, of 3, 3, okay, if we were talking about like coordinates and stuff like that. And so it's moved to the right 3, if each square is a meter, it's moved to the right 3 meters, and it's moved up 3 meters too, okay, that's pretty clear to see. And so we could have found that out by saying, well, its displacement is equal to its velocity vector multiplied by the time, so 3 multiplied by the vector 1, 1, and so its displacement is 3, 3 meters, which it is. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense and you can see why that formula is true. So let's take a look at a question using this, and it says, at time t equals 0, a particle has position 4i minus 2j meters relative to an origin O. And the particle travels at a constant velocity of negative 3i plus 2j meters per second, and we need to find its position at the time t equals 6 seconds. Okay, so we're going to be using this formula again, so its displacement is equal to its velocity vector multiplied by the time. And so we have a constant velocity of negative 3i plus 2j meters per second. Okay, so its displacement is going to be, well, we're interested at the time t equals 6 seconds, so 6 multiplied by its velocity vector, negative 2, 3. And so its displacement vector is going to be equal to negative 18, 12 meters. Okay, and that's its displacement. So that's how far the difference between where it started and where it finished. But remember, if we take a look at the question, it had a position of 4i minus 2j meters. And so we're going to say that, well, it started off here for negative 2 meters, and its displacement was negative 18, 12. So we need to add these two together. And so we get its new position is at the point negative 14. 10 meters okay hopefully that made sense i think that's pretty clear hopefully uh let's take a look at another question okay and in this one we're going to be taking using suvats okay to help us answer a question and so it says a particle has a position four two meters and a velocity of negative three two meters per second when the time is equal to zero it has an acceleration of three negative four meters per second squared and we need to find its position when t equals three okay i haven't written it in the question but we're assuming this is a constant acceleration so at the time t equals 0, it's traveling at negative 3, 2 meters per second, which means its initial velocity u, which is a vector, is negative 3, 2 meters per second. Okay. We are interested uh, when it is at time t equals 3. Okay, so t equals 3. And we know it has a constant acceleration of 3, negative 4. And we want to find its position, so we're interested in the particle's acceler uh, displacement. So which SUVAT can we use that uses U, T, A, and S? Well, we could use that S is equal to U, T plus one half A multiplied by T squared. And that was just a case of substituting these values into this formula and getting the displacement. So we've got U multiplied by T. Well, that's three multiplied by this vector here 
plus 1 half multiplied by t squared. Well, t squared is 9, multiplied by 1 half is 4.5, and that's multiplied by the acceleration vector 3, negative 4. Let's now work this out, and we get, well, it's going to be negative 9, 6, plus 4.5 times 3 is 13.5, and 4.5 multiplied by negative 4 is going to be negative 18. And so now it's just a case of adding these two together to calculate the displacement, and that is going to be positive 4.5 in the x um, coordinate, and negative 12 in the y component, and that's in meters. Okay, so that's the displacement. And similar to the last question, it had an initial uh, position of 4, 2 meters, and so it's just a case of doing 4, 2 meters plus 4.5, negative 12 meters, and so we get a new position of 8.5, negative 10 meters for the new particle's position. Let's move on to the third part, okay, which is using calculus with vectors. So hopefully you're familiar with the fact that if we have a displacement, s, which is equal to some equation in terms of time, if we were to differentiate that with respect to the time, it takes us from the displacement to the velocity. And then if we were to differentiate that velocity with respect to time, we go to acceleration, okay? And so hopefully you also know that if we were to then integrate that, it takes us back. So if we had an acceleration in terms of time t, if we were to integrate that with respect to the time, it takes us to the velocity and velocity back to displacement, okay? So hopefully you're familiar with that stuff there. If not, you can go watch my video on it. Well, we can also do this when we have a vector given to us for our velocity, okay? And this is really easy to do. So say we have a velocity vector, x, y, okay, and we want to find the acceleration vector. Well, we just have to differentiate the velocity vector, and it's really easy to do. And we represent this as v, so for the ve uh, vector, with a dot over the top, okay? And you could also represent it in a more classic way, dv by dt, if you want, uh, but usually you'll see it written like this, v with a dot over the top, just because it's quicker to write. And when we're calculating this, um, all we're going to do is say that, well, we're going to differentiate the x component with respect to time, okay, and that's our uh, x component. And then we're going to differentiate our y component with respect to time, and that becomes the new vector. Okay, so we're just differentiating the x and then y component, and you'll see this in an example question. When it comes to integrating, okay, so say we have a velocity vector and we want the displacement vector, well, we integrate it with respect to time, and it works in a similar way. We're going to integrate the x component with respect to time, and then we're going to integrate the y component with respect to time. Okay, so it's actually pretty simple. It just looks kind of confusing when you look at this formula here. So let's take a look at a question that's going to use this, and it says, a particle moves along a horizontal plane so that at time t it has a velocity of v, which is given by 4t squared, and then in the x component and negative 3t plus 1 in the y component meters per second. And sometimes in a question you might see this written as 4t squared i plus negative 3t plus 1j meters per second. Okay, so it could also be written like that. And we need to find the acceleration of this particle at a time t. Well, we've been given a velocity vector, and we want the acceleration vector, which means we're going to be differentiating it. And so we could write it like this, v with a dot, or dv by dt, it's up to you. And so that's going to be equal to, well, we're going to take the derivative of the x component with respect to time, which we could write like this. We could say it's d by dt of 4t squared, which is the x component, and that's the i unit vector, plus the derivative with respect to time of the y component, which is negative 3t plus 1, and that is it, going to be our j unit vector. Okay, and so calculating this derivative is pretty easy. We get 8ti subtract 3j, okay? And that becomes our new acceleration vector. So we could say the acceleration vector a is equal to that. And you could also write it like this. We could say it's a is 8t minus three, and that's meters per second squared. So hopefully this video was useful. If it was, like, subscribe, and share, and go over to my channel for tons more maths tutorials. And I've also got a whole playlist on A-level stuff, so you can go and look at that. Thanks for watching.